The, the idea starts from the fact I have, I'm from Antwerpen, from Belgium, um, and uh, I'm an industrial designer. That's my, uh, my base, uh, my background. Um, and uh, back in 2006, uh, I had um, a, a good friend of mine who is uh, in the diamond trading, and he said that he asked me to design a watch for him, a man's watch, with a maximum amount of diamonds. Um, so when you see the products I have now, you will understand that uh, diamonds are not my best friend. Uh, anyway, they uh, they're not so interesting t to me. In, uh, so the, the the idea was to 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 pave a watch with a maximum amount of diamonds because he wanted to sell diamonds, of course. Um, so I I took the challenge to to create something and uh, to use the, the physical elements of uh, of a diamond um, and to uh, to to use them in a different way, more in a man's way, how a man would react towards diamonds. And uh, so we've, we had the idea to, to give the time with diamonds, basically. That was the, that was the basic concept. So we designed uh, the system, we did also a prototype, and when the prototype was done, Tag Oyer came with Diamond Fiction. It was a watch they designed, and uh, so we stopped the project, of course, because we were not new anymore. My friend moved to Hong Kong, and so everything stopped. But I was beaten by the vi virus uh, of watchmaking uh, by doing that because I did a long investigation of everything, uh, understanding the market, know what to do, how it works. And I was a bit disappointed uh, about, from a creative point of view, I said, OK, the, the, these watches, they look really nice and, and there are many, many features, but it's not really there is not really something that goes beyond a watch with hands when we talk about mechanical watches, of course. It were, they're all based on hands, there were a few exceptions, but <clears throat> most of them, when there were exceptions, they were really expensive. Um, so there was not really something in between traditional watchmaking and extreme watchmaking, like independent watchmakers do it sometimes. And so, um, in fact, I designed my own watch. One day I said, okay, let's, let's design a watch for myself. How would it look like? What would it be? What, what, what should it look like? And okay, and I, um, as a designer, as an industrial designer, I designed my own watch. That was the, the beginning of, uh, of Ressence, yeah, for basically. Function. But in this case, um, the function was how to display the time. That was the, the basic function. So I tried to find a way that was ergonomically uh, uh, the same as a normal watch so that people that learned how to read time with hands could read the time on my watch in the same way, in the same logics. That was very important. Why? Because ergonomically you read time faster with hands than, for example, digital watches. Because your brains, they assimilate the angle of the hands and the size uh, to a time. They transfer, they, they transfer it in your brains into time conception. While you have a digital watch, you have to read it, every digit, otherwise you don't know how late it is. And so, uh, this was a very strong element that I wanted to keep. But I wanted to get rid of the hands as a physical element, because they are very archaic to me as an industrial designer. A hand is really a mechanical thing, uh, a consequence of a mechanism. And uh, so I wanted to combine the idea of being like a screen, like everything is screens today, but mechanical. So I wanted to create a mechanical screen, in fact, uh, with the watch. And that was the basic idea. And then I translated that into mechanical systems that are behind, that you don't see. Um, and it's on purpose you don't see them. This is really the, uh, one of the, the key elements of, of a Ressence watch, is that the gear as an element is not um, uh, it's not the most important aspect of the watch. It's it's a mean to get somewhere, to get to this this um, this dial, this 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 indication of time. Um, a lot more than being something important on itself. Many watch makers they will prioritize or they will look at the watch from the inside. They will look at the watch from what from the gear, from the mechanism inside. They, that's what they will start with. Um, as for raisons, um, you start from the outside. 
what does it bring to you? What is this product? What is the meaning of that product? In the end, it's a watch. Even if we all have our mobile phones and everything, in the end, it's a product to read the time. So, Renaissance, the name, even the name comes from Renaissance, the l'essentiel, the essential being giving time. So, it's a, it's a rebirth of giving the time, the way to give the time. And so, uh, for me, it was first, how do I give the time? And then secondly, how do I do it? But I don't need to show it. People that are technical, they will understand there's many things inside. People that don't are not technical, I don't bother them with that. They will just have the effect of the animation and it's just nice to see how it works. But you don't need to, to show to to, to open the skirt and to see what is inside. You just see the clothes, it's, uh, it looks nice, nice dress, and you can only imagine what's happening inside. That's a bit the philosophy. Type 3 is, um, in fact, the, the same logics of displaying the time uh, in a surface, not in levels, like a normal watch. You have hands on top of each other, but Resonance is all in one plane. And uh, so the Series 1, the watches I had, un I have until, until the Type 3 and still have, of course, because it's another range, another product. Um, they have a flat dial uh, and the Type 3 has a curved dial. Uh, but the, 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 the principle is the same, uh, being that everything is in, 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 on a sphere in Type 3 and, uh, and flat in uh, Series 1. The oil is also an extra element that, um, that comes into consideration when you look at the broader picture of what is the brand Ressence. The brand Ressence is, um, uh, when we talk about the oil uh, in the watch, the reason why I did that was not uh, just because I can say it's a watch with oil and it's probably the only one that is mechanical with oil because there are some, some watches that have liquid, it's not oil, it's, it's silicon usually they use, uh, and they're quartz, they're not mechanical. Um, but it's because I have the combination, Ressens has the combination of the, of the dial that is in a plane, so everything is very close to the, to the sapphire, um, and uh, the fact that by adding the oil, you take away the refraction of the the light between the glass and the dial and so you have a the impression that you can touch the the, the the different elements on the dial by taking away the layer of refraction and of course it's not only that because of the fact you have oil you have to separate uh, the oil part so the the display so the display part that is one of the Ressence patents from the movement because the movement is mechanical and a mechanical movement does not run in, in liquid, it only runs in air. So you have to separate them physically to avoid any risk of leakage and so uh, that watch also has a, a, a magnetic transmission through a titanium membrane uh, to get the information from the movement to the module on top. And a, another element that is very particular to Type 3 is that it has no crown anymore, or not a physical crown like normal watches. Again, th this is a choice made in the logics of the brand Ressence that um, taking dematerialization the watch, dematerialize, dematerialize a watch, meaning that the crown next to the hands that I already got rid of, the crown is still the, the mechanical interface with the watch. It's, it's what the, the physical element you touch. It's as if you had to uh, open the bonnet of your uh, engine, of the car, and do something inside that engine, and then it would start. Now cars, they have a button, start, right? Mechanical watches, they still have, you still have to open the bonnet and, and try to find the button and, 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 and things. So this is extremely sad, uh, the crown of a, a traditional watch. So I wanted to translate uh, these, these elements of this evolution of uh, industrial design that is going to a more um, hiding the mechanics, really to have this mechanical element uh, a bit more hidden or a bit more 
um, let's let's put it differently. I want that the product adapts to the people and not the people to the product. For an industrial designer, this is a very important um, uh, theme, thema. Uh, so that most um, most products have, when they were launched, most products are like that. That first, the first generations, people had to adapt to the product because the product was not perfect. Let's say uh, a type uh, type board. Why is it like that? Not because it's ergonomical to put the the letters like that, but it's because the first typewriters they had these these uh, hands on it, and they would they would cross and and interfere and they would have jam. So they have put them in a certain way that the most word combinations uh, were not intervening. Like the first cars, you it was they had handles all over the place. You really had to study to drive it. Now cars are really simple. So industry and you can for planes and, and almost mechanical products they've been through that evolution but not watchmaking so i thought why why not also doing that for watchmaking and 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 to create a product that is more adapted to how people would use the product take the example of apple what they did with their ipad um, a kid of two years can use an ipad this is just impossible. You give a, an IBM of 1983 to a kid, he's impossible to work with DOS. Okay. So it's, uh, this, these are, these are um, logics that go through an evolution in, 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 uh, in product design. Uh, in the life cycle of a product, you have this evolution, the adaptation of the product to the people and not the, and not the, the opposite. And so this is also a logic I would like to apply to Resonance. Let me introduce you to the, the way time is uh, displayed on a Ressence watch. First of all, this watch has no hands. The hands are replaced by discs. You'll have a main disc that is nearly covering the complete uh, dial of the watch with the minutes hands, the biggest hand. You have a smaller one that is the, representing the hours. So on this watch, it is four o'clock and three minutes. You have a smaller one that is indicating the seconds, but even more the fact that the watch is running. And you have a PM AM indication, so on this watch it's 16 hours and 3 minutes. So as everything is in one plane, uh, to avoid collision between the, the, the parts when they move, they turn around each other and they have a kind of motion or a ballet when they turn around each other. So now what I did, I did put uh, the watch in set time mode. So I will accelerate how the watch is moving. So here it is four o'clock, 20 minutes. Half past four. this would be five o'clock so you recognize the position of the hands is similar to an, a traditional watch well, I believe of course very strong in in uh, in the philosophy of course of the brand otherwise I wouldn't have done it um, but I can understand that people have another philosophy it's just that uh, I suggest another way to look at the product uh, than most uh, most uh, watches in the world basically uh, and that is the philosophy not driven by a watchmaker philosophy but from an industrial designer philosophy then you can fill it in in different ways I fill it in with a style that is that looks like a combination of Germanic style more Bauhaus style uh, but with a a Latin accent because they, uh, the products are still nice to look at. They are not very rigid. Not uh, they are. They're, they're still. They're soft. You can touch them. They're round. It's it's uh, it's a bit like a pebble. Uh, so, and that's why also the the logo of the brand is a little hand because the hand is human. It's soft. It's round. So it also comes into uh, into that logics in the style then of the product, the language of forms watch is automatic so when you look at it you will see that the rotor is always staying uh, as it is you can read the brand of the watches on the back there's no brand on the front only the logo 
the type of watch. So this one is a type type uh, series one, type thousand and one. It's a black version. The number, production number, number eleven, and the fact it's automatic. So you just um, you just saw series one. That is the. Um, the first, uh, first Renaissance product, uh, 2013, uh, a new model was introduced called Type 3. Type 3 has the main functions are the same, being minutes and hours. So on this watch, it's six o'clock, 33 minutes. It has also second, second uh, indication, but it is 360 seconds and not 60 seconds. You have the weekday indication so on this watch it is Sunday and then you have here the date the 12th so <clears throat> you will notice that um, the watch has no crown so the crown function is done by the back of the watch on the back of the watch you have the outer ring that is connected to the glass you have a central part that is fixed and then you have the rotor that is the ring here indicating automatic and the fact of course the serial number so this is serial number number two to wind the watch you have to take the back turn it like that and you will wind the watch like this <laughs> clicks back in the zero position so that's the normal running position and to set the time you have to go the other way put the glass in a certain position turn the watch around for example, put it at 7 o'clock, go back, again put it in zero position so it starts running again and the time is still at 7 o'clock. So this watch has a gravity system inside made out of golden components because they are very heavy. Uh, and working with gravity so what you look at is what you will move if you turn it around what you do with the back will not influence the front when you look at the front what you do with the back will influence the front it's very logical what you look at is what you do